Hey, good afternoon, Grade 8. Um, I'm Mrs. Milani Lowe, and today you are not going to learn anything new, but we are going to do some term 4 revision to prepare you for the November exam. So today's quiz uh, consists of 15 questions. So that is to really assess whether you know the term 4 content. So if you can, if you listen attentively this afternoon, and so that you can do a proper revision, then you will be definitely able to answer the questions in the in the in, in the quiz uh, after this very well as well as for the november exam i promise you that most of these things will appear in the november exam so it's very important that you really pay uh, attention this afternoon so let's get started i'm going to first um uh, uh, revise the solar system and uh, the solar system as you know uh, has the sun in the center with the eight planets orbiting around the sun and all everything is kept together by gravitational force so the sun in the center then with your eight planets as well as the asteroid belt which is between mars and jupiter it's a very important fact the, the asteroid belt is between mars and jupiter then we also have our dwarf planets of which pluto is an example and then another thing that you should know is that uh, comets come from the Oort cloud, very far away from, from our solar system. And as comets ap uh, approach the sun, then normally a white tail appears because of all the ice and, and, and gas that starts to evaporate. And uh, so comets, when they come closer to the sun, that white tail appears. And you must know that they come from the Oort cloud. Okay, and then uh, another thing that you should remember about the solar system is that we have four planets uh, between the asteroid belt and the sun, which is Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And those four are the inner planets. We call the terrestrial planets because they've got rocky surfaces. But beyond the asteroid belt, we have four other planets, which we call the ga gas giants. So very big gaseous planets. Uh, and those are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And then I have a very easy sentence here that you can remember the eight planets in the correct order from closest to the sun to, to uh, furthest away from the sun. So you can remember it by my very educated mother just served us noodles. And each uh, first letter represents a, a, a planet. Mercury for my, the V is for Venus, E for Earth, M for Mars, J for Jupiter, S for Saturn, U for Uranus, and N for noodles. So, um, and then you can also remember our sun is a star. So where does this huge amount of energy and light come from? I think you can remember that from a previous lesson. Um, the energy in our sun is produced when hydrogen molecules fuse together to form helium atoms. And then in these nuclear reactions, these uh, huge amounts of heat and light is formed. So it's very important that you know about nuclear fusion, where hydrogen fuse together to form helium, and then um, energy, heat and light, is then released um, through these nuclear reactions. Now, let's just go back to our four rocky planets. You have to know one or two main characteristics of each one of these planets. The first one and the smallest planet closest to the sun is Mercury. You saw that on the, on the previous slide. Venus is the second planet from the sun. Venus is nearly as big as the Earth. It's similar in size, but it's the hottest planet in our solar system because of the specific atmosphere of Venus. And then very important, Venus is known as the morning star, the evening star. That is the first star that you will see, the bright, first bright star uh, just before, just after sunset in the evening. So that is Venus. Then the third planet from the sun is Earth. And you know very well that Earth is the only planet in our solar system that supports life. And then another fact that you should know about Earth is that Earth has only one moon. And uh, it's important to realize that the moon is not a planet. It's and the reason for that is the moon orbits the Earth. A planet orbits the sun. So that is the difference. That is why the moon cannot be classified 
as a planet. It's only the satellite of the Earth, so it, 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 it orbits the Earth and not the Sun. And then the fourth planet from the Sun, just before we get to the asteroid belt, uh, is Mars. And uh, Mars has a red appearance. So sometimes you can see it with a naked eye, and through a telescope, Mars always have a red appearance because of the uh, consist consistence of the, of the rocky surface, and Mars is a very cold planet. So let's just look at the reason for Earth, the reasons for why Earth can support life. And we've done this also in a previous lesson, but I just want to refresh your memories. There are four conditions on Earth that makes it able for Earth to support life. The first one, if you can remember, if you think back, the Earth's distance is just the right distance from, from the sun. It's not too close, not too far, so the Earth is not too cold or not too hot. So it has the ideal temperature. That's the first condition. Earth has the ideal temperature to support life. The second reason why Earth can support life is that because of this ideal temperature range, water can be found on Earth in three phases, as a solid, ice, or a liquid, the water that we get in our rivers and oceans, and a gas, our water vapor in the atmosphere. And we now all know that liquid water, water that we can drink or that you can uh, have in, a, in an ocean where plants and animals can live in, liquid water is really important for their sustain, uh, to sustain life on Earth. So that is the second reason. Water is uh, present on Earth in, in all three phases. Then we also know that we have just the right amount of sunlight um, on Earth to provide the energy for the first step in any food chain, so for photosynthesis to produce food. And the last and fourth reason is that we have oxygen available on Earth for respiration, so plants and animals um, can respirate with the oxygen. So those four conditions, you have to be able to name them and you have to be able to discuss them, why Earth can support life. Then the outer planets, the four gas giants, if we go and look at the first one after the asteroid belt, we look at Jupiter. It's the biggest planet in the solar system. And then how do we identify Jupiter? If you look through a telescope, you will see that Jupiter has stripes and it has a large red spot on the planet. So that is, those are the characteristics of Jupiter. Then Saturn. Saturn is the second biggest planet in the solar system. And we identify Saturn through a telescope. Of course, you won't be able to see it with your naked eye. Uh, Saturn has these rings around it, many, many, many rings, and more moons than any other planet. So Saturn is the second biggest, and then very uh, characteristic of Saturn are the rings. Uranus is the, also the coldest planet. Uranus also has rings, but it's not that it's not as obvious as those of Saturn. Uranus is very cold. It's the coldest planet in, planet in the solar system. And the Neptune is the furthest away, the most distant from the sun. And it's a big blue planet um, if you look through a telescope to Neptune. So now let's just go back to um, where does our solar system belong in the universe? It belongs in the Milky Way galaxy. Here you have a picture of what we think the Milky Way galaxy looks like if you, are, uh, if you look at it from afar. Um, and then the second bullet, a galaxy, you have to know what a galaxy is. It's billions of stars and ga gas and dust and everything is held together by gravitational force. So a galaxy is billions of stars with their planets, all these solar systems together with gas and dust and other material and it's kept together by gravitational force. And then our galaxy has a spiral shape. We also mentioned that in a previous lesson. So in the in the in our Milky Way galaxy, our um, solar system uh, lies on one of the spiral arms, more to the side of the Milky Way. You can see the yellow arrow there pointing to more or less where you will find our sun. Now the next slide is where does the Milky Way uh, galaxy get, it, get its name? If you look at uh, this uh, sky at night, but then you have to have to be in a place where there's really not a lot of light, then you will be able to see this band of stars, um, and that that is more or less where the center of our galaxy is, and that uh, faint band of millions and billions of stars with gas and dust uh, that is called the Milky Way, and the name. Uh, for the Milky Way was given uh, to it by the Greeks 
and the the word that they use there is because it looks like spilled milk and that is where the name milky way comes from because that band of stars uh, the greek said it looks like um, spilled milk then um, the second last thing that you need to remember about the content of term four is that in the sky we uh, some stars form patterns we also discussed that in a previous lesson so this uh, pattern of four stars you all know by now is called the southern cross the southern cross has two pointers and the brightest one of the two pointers is called alpha centauri and what is so special about alpha centauri i, I think you can remember that it is the nearest star to our sun and Alpha Centauri is about 4,2 light years away from our sun. Now, what is the meaning of light years again? That is how we measure distances in the universe. So why don't we use kilometers to measure distances in the universe? The reason for that is that distances in space are huge. It's very vast. So it's impractical to measure it in kilometers. So therefore, we use it in light. Oh, we measure distances in space in light years light hours or light minutes and if you remember a light year is the distance that light can travel in a year so there are two distances that you should know for this exam the distance from the earth to the sun is eight light minutes it meaning it takes light eight minutes to move from the sun to the earth and then like i just said the distance from our sun to the nearest star is Alpha Centauri, and that is 4,2 light years. So from the Earth to the Sun, the Sun is the closest star to the Earth, that's eight light minutes, but from our Sun to the nearest other star, that is 4,2 light years. So now you can continue with a quiz. As I said, there are 15 questions, and I wish you luck with the quiz today, but if you can answer the questions to the quiz, you will also be able to answer the questions in the November exam. So I wanna wish you all the best of luck, with their uh, quiz as well as the exam. So prepare well and enjoy. Thank you very much.